Now, another thing people have been asking about a lot is, um, is the Robbie Mook connection. So Robbie Mook, at first when this hit the presses, there was uh, speculation out there that Robbie Mook was behind this app. Well, Robbie Mook was not directly behind this app. He is not involved with Shadow Inc., not directly. And here's the statement that he put out about it. I'm going to go check out this tweet that he put out not too long ago. Sorry, folks, I do not have anything to do with building the Iowa Caucus app. I don't know anything about it, he says. Had no role in it and don't own a company that makes mobile apps. I'm assuming he means apps there. He spelled it app up, but, you know, please contact the Iowa Democrats with questions about it. So it was reported that Robbie Mook had direct involvement in this. He, of course, denied that. But later people were asking questions like, yeah, but he has some cross-pollination here. And what are they pointing at directly? They're pointing at the fact that um, he is part of an organization called uh, uh, Digital, uh, what's it called? Like Digital Democracy something. Defending Digital Democracy. There it is. He's part of an organization called Defending Digital Democracy. They cross-pollinate with Shadow Inc. And all these people kind of coalesce, as indicated in the Intercept article. Now, here is something from the Washington Post. So we're, we're going to look at this. Cybersecurity 202, Iowa caucus app is the latest example of politicos building faulty technology with disastrous results. And they kind of, all right, so here they're quoting people. Um... The most important lesson anyone should take away from this is that if you're going to use a new technology that you need to very rigorously test it and exercise it and plan for what your backup will be if it fails. This is according to Aaron Rosenbach, a former top Pentagon official who leads the Defending Digital Democracy program at Harvard, at Harvard University. Now that's the thing that Robbie Mook is involved with and that's why people were making the connection. Yeah, but uh, Defending Digital Democracy has had some cross-pollination with Shadow. They have collaborated and they're pointing to an event that took place. All right. So hold that thought here. Now, here's what Washington Post goes on to say about that. As Democrats grew impatient for caucus results Monday night, Rosenbach's group, Defending Digital Democracy, which was built in part to combat misinformation campaigns and conspiracy theories, itself became the focus of a false rumor spread online. This is what the Washington Post says. Hundreds of people on Twitter began claiming that Defending Digital Democracy had built the malfunctioning caucus app, which they didn't. Shadow Inc. did. All right. Possibly because they'd learned the app had connections with Clinton's 2016 campaign, which they did. One of Rosenbach's co-founders is Clinton's 2016 campaign manager, Robbie Mook. That's referring to Defending Digital Democracy. Robbie Mook's involved with them. Mitt Romney's 2012 campaign manager, Matt Rhodes, was also a co-founder of the Bipartisan Group. The claim had no basis in reality. This is according to the Washington Post. But it exemplified how a phony narrative can take hold, especially when facts are hazy and do real damage to the democratic process, Rosenbach told me. It's a near perfect example of how misinformation, disinformation, and a little bit of bad and irresponsible reporting turns into something that takes over parts of the Swedosphere in a way that contributes to undermining trust in the caucuses and in democracy. There's no evidence, this is according to Washington Post, again, there's no evidence that the false rumor was spread or amplified by a foreign adversary <laughs> or anyone other than legitimately confused people online. Okay. Though many spreading it were Clinton critics, Rosenbach's group is considering how they might use the experience as a lesson in future education for, wow, okay. Um, so why, so they're saying there's no basis to this claim. That's what they're claiming. There's no basis to this claim. No basis in reality for people claiming that Robbie Mook was in any way involved with this or that defending digital democracy is in any way involved with this and that it was a total rumor that's completely false. That's what Washington Post is claiming. So why is Washington Post claiming this? Why is Washington Post claiming without a doubt that defending digital democracy had no exposure at all to this app? Here's why. You ready for this? This is the truth, by the way. Here's why they believe them. That's it. 
So Washington Post is saying definitively without a, it's a false rumor, no basis in reality, totally not true. They have no exposure. They have no awareness. What is Washington Post basing that off of? They believe them. Because here's what really happened. Here's why people are speculating. We're going to go over to the Des Moines Register. So check this out. We're going to scroll down a little bit. You ready for this? Both Iowa parties and their app and web development vendors participated in an exercise last fall with Harvard's Defending Digital Democracy Project. Okay, so that happened. The parties, the app and web development vendors, they all participated in an exercise. And who was that with? The Defending Digital Democracy Project. That's why there was later speculation that testing took place. There was a testing that took place. Robbie Mook was part of that, as were all the Clinton advisors, all the people who, again, have cross-pollinated in all this. Led by campaign experts Robbie Mook and Matt Rhodes, as well as experts in cybersecurity, national security, uh, technology and election, blah, 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 blah. They simulated various scenarios involving cyber and misinformation threats to the caucuses. So Washington Post said this was based on nothing. This was based on nothing in reality. Really? They had an event together. They did an exercise together where they simulated various scenarios involving cyber and misinformation threats to the caucuses. That's nothing? That's not reality? Now, here's the follow-up. A statement from the Belfer Center, which, which you know, is, is the Defending Digital Democracy Project. That's what that's under. It's under the Belfer Center over at Harvard. A statement from the Belfer Center said that no technology, including the mobile app, was used or tested at the event. And that's it. <laughs> that's what the Washington Post is pointing to. The Washington Post believes them. They had an exercise on this topic in the name of the caucus. These app developers were there. The parties were there. They were all there. They were all there for this testing exercise. But they're saying the app wasn't tested. So whenever somebody says, hey, we know for sure that now, do I know what went on at this event directly? No, I don't. I was not physically present. But the Washington Post, they're being very definitive here by saying there's no truth to implying that Robbie Mook had any involvement. And what is their basis? What are they pointing to? They believe them. That's it. They believe them. Do I know for sure, 100%, without a doubt, as of the recording of this, I don't know if something was tested or not. But we do know that this event took place, at least as of right now. If something comes to the surface later that this event itself never even happened, well, then, you know, we'll, we'll do an update and we'll do a retraction. But again, no one's denying that this event happened. Again, both Iowa parties and their app and web development vendors participated in an exercise last fall with Harvard's Defending Digital Democracy Project, led by campaign experts Robbie Mook and Matt Rhodes. Washington Post is saying that's nothing. That, that's meaningless. That doesn't matter. Why? Because a statement from the Belfer Center said that no technology, including the mobile app, was used or tested at the event. So basically, we, we may never know whether it was tested or not. It's not totally consequential. But the, the theme here is all these players, there's cross-pollination between the Clinton campaigns and the Obama campaigns and the Romney campaigns. And players like Robbie Mook, very dishonest actors. They're all cross-pollinating here. And they made an app. They made an app under the company where a higher up is married to a senior strategist for Pete Buttigieg. They're both fans of Pete Buttigieg. Pete Buttigieg pumped over $40,000 into this app. He was the only 2020 candidate to pump that kind of money into it. And all of a sudden the app's malfunctioning, but it looks like Pete's ahead. 
That's what we do now. And if you try to connect any of these dots, Washington Post will say that's totally false. And what is their big, what is their big smoking gun? Well, they believe what Robbie Mook and his people said. They just believe them. So if someone says to you, like, hey, hey, implying Robbie Mook had any involvement, well, that's all false. It's like, well, if you're saying it's completely false, that's just because you just believe them. This event took place. This testing took place. And again, as of the recording of this, that's not disputed. If we find out later this testing never happened, all right, that changes the story. But as of right now, as of me being live right now, no one's disputing that. They're just saying the testing didn't happen. And Washington Post believes it totally uncritically. All right, media knocking it out of the park again. Get your news on with Ron. Don't you want to know what's going on? We're getting our news on today. Get your news on with Ron. Don't you want to know what's going on? We're getting our news on today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can tweet me an article at Ron Placone. We'll go through it together and 